Good evening, family. Thank you so much for joining us on this evening. I pray that you've had a wonderful week. Your holiday was great. And I pray that you have enjoyed our praise and worship. My desire tonight, family, is that God would speak to your heart. One, one of the things that I have determined, the more I get into God's word, the more he tends to reveal to me, not just himself, but, he, I, but more of me is revealed. So on tonight, I pray that uh, as God has used his word to once again um, kind of invade my, my, my peace, uh, I pray that it does the same for you if you find yourself in similar shoes. Um, so if you'll turn with me to St. John chapter 16, verse 33, this is going to be, a, I pray, a very eye-opening uh, uh, opportunity for you uh, to, to just, re just realize who God truly is. Amen. Amen. John chapter 16, verse 33. Uh, it's a very uh, familiar passage of scripture for some, but for some of you, you may have never heard it before. And that's okay, because each and every day, one of the things that I've found, even scripture that I've read before, it's still new when I read it. God reveals something different in his word each time I read it. So for you that have never read it, don't worry about it. We're all in the same boat. And for those of you who have heard it, have read it, have studied it, have meditated on it, I pray God reveals something even better on tonight. Amen. Amen. John 16, verse 33, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Ah, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And just for a few moments, family, just to focus our, our thoughts, I want to just I'll utilize two words. There's more. Yeah, there's more. Will you bow with me? Father, we thank you again for another blessed opportunity to come before you. I, we thank you, Father, for the blessing of forgiveness. We thank you, Father, for the blessing of your, of your death, burial, and your resurrection. We thank you, Father, that currently you sit at the right hand of, of God himself. And, Father, you, on a day-to-day -day basis, you are petitioning uh, and you are interceding for us, each and every one of us. So, Father, we thank you just for being our God. Our, our Lord, just for being our Savior. We thank you uh, for what you've done in our families, in our church, and I thank you for what you're doing in our homes and, and on our jobs, Father. We thank you for being the doctor, Father, that we so desperately needed, the lawyer that we so desperately needed, the counselor that we can't do without. We thank you, uh, and I pray now in the name of Jesus that you would open up your word just in this short uh, opportunity to share with your people. Move me out of the way, Lord, and you have your way. Now, Lord, I do uh, give particular uh, uh, requests. Uh, I pray for uh, the healing of Brother uh, Ramsey McDonald. I pray, Father, uh, for the healing uh, for, the, for the Woodard family and the Simple family. Lord, I pray for the healing of the Harris family and all of those, Father, that I may not even remember. Lord, I Thank you right now in the name of Jesus that while we're yet speaking, that even when we can't remember the names, even when we don't know what to say, your word says that you understand the moanings and the groanings. And so, Father, lift them up right now, all because you know. Now, Lord, uh, again, move me out of the way. You have your way. Speak, teach, Lord. But most of all, you save. We thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Family, I want you to know today that regardless of what you are going through, regardless of your, of your physical circumstances, your emotional circumstances, your spiritual circumstances, your family circumstance, your financial circumstance, I understand that, that sometimes life gets in the way. I understand that sometimes we are down. There are things that, that, that's happening and we wonder why. Well, I want you to understand, regardless of where you are today, there's more. 
Amen. And some of you say, well, oh, Lord, Pastor, are you saying that there's more of the mess that I'm going through? Well, listen, if you if you've lived this life as long as I have, I can answer uh, unequivocally. Yes, there are going to be challenges in our life. Yes, there's going to be issues in our life. But the there's more today. It means for you and I that there's greater. Amen. So family, you know, we, we all do it. We all face uh, really difficult situations in our lives. And there are times, if we were to be honest about it, we ask ourselves, why? Why is this happening now? Why is this happening to me? Family, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I want you to understand today, you're not alone. It's normal to ask this question, but our problem is, Sometimes we seem to stay there. Yes. And when we're asking this question, one of the things that I'm finding is that the peace of God eludes our lives. And this is because we can only find peace in Christ. See, when we're in his word, we can find peace. When, when we participate in praise and worship, we can find peace peace. And, and this is because when we find ourselves in either of those places, that's where Jesus is. Are you with me? So obviously, the peace that we so desire, if we find it in Christ, when we find ourselves not in Christ, when we find ourselves in various situations, in various uh, areas that, that have nothing to do with Christ, then obviously that means that the peace that we so desire eludes our lives. The Bible says, according to our text, that I've told you these things. Ah, you see, family, when we turn to God's word, something happens on the inside of us. And it's the same thing that happened when Jesus would speak to his disciples. See, they would get glimpse of, an, of, of another world. They would, they would see how when he's speaking, he would make it so real about what's to come. The heaven that we are about to inherit, the, the, the joy that we are about to inherit, the peace that we are about to inherit. He'd make it so real. But watch this. So does his word. But see, when we find ourselves moving away from his word, moving away from his truths, being human, we get wrapped up in the issues of this world. And that's normal. That's normal. You're not, by, you're not alone. You're not by yourself. But when that happens, sometimes we forget that there is a spiritual realm. You see, Paul referenced this as he told us where our focus should be. Paul said that we should fix our eyes on what we don't see because what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. And that's according to 2 Chronicles 4 and 18. He says, so we fix our eyes on what is what is seen, but what on but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen again is eternal. What are you saying, Pastor? Well, let me share something with you. I know what's, what you're dealing with is real. I know what's going on in your lives is real. I know what's happening around you is real. And, 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 and unfortunately, as humans, that's what we have to deal with. But God wants us to understand that trouble may endure for a night, but what? Joy, yeah, will come in the morning. Unfortunately, some of us want that morning to be tomorrow. Some of us want that morning to be today. Some of us even wanted that tomorrow to be yesterday. But God, see the wonderful thing about God, God don't work on your time and he doesn't work on my time. God works on his time. But the wonderful thing that I love about that, the old folk used to say, he may not come, wouldn't you want him? <laughs> but he's always on time. Well, family, back to our text. See, this world, this world that we live in, this world that we reside in, this world that we toil in has trouble. And our text tonight tells us in this world that we're going to have trouble. Peter told us that we shouldn't be surprised when we face difficult times. 
He said that we shouldn't think it strange. 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13 says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. You see, found in his text, in this text, he explains that as we participate in suffering later, we'll be overjoyed when Christ's glory is revealed. And family, can I admit tonight that I don't always see that connection? And, and likewise, you don't either. I don't understand how it, through my pain, his glory is going to be revealed. I don't see how through, through the issues that I'm dealing with, my struggles, that his glory will be revealed. Well, can I share something with you? Whatever you're going through, God is allowing you to go through it so that you might be a testimony for somebody else. Now, is that saying that it's going to be easy? No, it's not. It's not. And as pastor, as a husband, as a father, as a son, I'm privileged to know some things that maybe some of you don't know. I know some of the struggles that individuals that I'm close to are going through. I understand some of the things that are happening and you're struggling and you're, and, and, and you're crying and, and, and you're having sleepless nights and, 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 and you're wondering why me and you're wondering what's really going on. But can I share something with you? See, God is going to use you to be a testimony to someone else. What you're dealing with, God is going to tell that man, woman, boy, girl, if I can do it in them, I can do it in you. If I can do it for them, I can do it for you. You see, he explains as we participate in suffering that we'll be overjoyed when Christ's glory is revealed. How is, the, how is Christ's glory going to be revealed if there's no if there's no test? He can't have a testimony without a test. You see, when I recently read in Peter about suffering, it confirmed all of all of it again. Peter asked, "How is it to our credit?" This is according to First Peter two and twenty. If when we're beaten for doing wrong and we take it patiently, but if we suffer when we're doing what is right and we take it patiently. Patiently, that pleases God. Let me open that. Let me unpackage that. Because see, there is no glory in me going to jail when I've when I've done the crime. I'm just using that as an example. But when I go to jail for a crime that I didn't commit, and God moves in such a way that I'm exonerated, then through that action, God is given the glory. Are you with me? And if I did my time without cursing God, without hurting other people, without without becoming some maniac out of control because I've been I, I've been done wrong, I'm an innocent man. If I stand strong and if I do what God has called me to do, be an example, meaning don't cuss out the gods, don't cuss out the judge, don't make a mess when I'm locked up, but stand strong. In my conviction, one in God, stand strong in my conviction, in my innocence, and watch God move on my behalf. And when he moves, then God will get the glory. See, there's a purpose in suffering. Then so, but if there's a if the if, the, if there's a purpose in suffering, then 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 how can we take heart? How can how can we literally feel good, have an understanding about what's going on. See, if this world was, see, here, here's the catch. If this world was all that there is, it would be disheartening. See, then we can testify that we're born, we suffer, then we die. And that's the end. Let me say that one more time. We're born, we suffer, then we die. That's the end. But see, Jesus told the disciples to take heart because he overcame the world. 
And see, when we accepted Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, you and I, our sins were forgiven. But at that moment, we were also appropriated Christ's righteousness, and we became joint heirs with Christ, according to Romans 8 and 17. In other words, listen, you can't have it, you can't have it and, 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 and have his glory without having to deal with his suffering. Ooh. Oh, but there's good news in that family because, see, there's more going on than meets our physical eyes. You see, there's an enemy of our souls who was once a beautiful angel named Lucifer. He, he, he wanted to be higher than God, so God cast him out of heaven, and he took a third of the angels with him, which are known as demons. And see, Satan loves to discourage Christians. He, and he does it by telling us lies, lies such as God doesn't care about you. And see, and if he did care about you, watch this. Why does he allow you to go through what's, what you're going through right now? If he loved you, he would have stopped that from happening in your life. If he really loved you, he would give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. And instead of just speaking it, it would actually be in your life. He would tell you that, listen, he be, we because he he has allowed you to experience death and, and, and pain and, and, and anguish that God doesn't care. But I want you to know, family, a day is coming. A day is coming when all of our tears will be wiped away. A day is coming when God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And we will live without the presence of evil. And for me, the most exciting thing is that one day I'll be able to look him right in the face. The one who sacrificed for me. The one who died for me. The one who was who resurrected for me. I'll be able to look at him and say through all the pain, through all of the tears, through all of the anguish, I'm here with my Savior. But in the meantime, while you're here, you're going to deal with some stuff. You're going to deal with some pain. You're going to deal with the anguish. And you're going to deal with it with the promise that heaven and the glory of the life that you have lived will be resurrected. And you will be with Christ. But how do you do that? How do you how do you how do you balance trusting God and going through pain? How do you balance trusting God and dealing with loss? How do you balance trusting God and dealing with the anguish that this world can be? Well, let me just share something with you. Romans 12 and 2 says. That we are not to be conformed to this world, but to be tra but we ought to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Now the question is, what transforms our minds? I'm glad you asked. God's word. That's what transforms our minds. See, when we saturate ourselves with the word of God, we can focus on what's unseen. Instead of what is seen. Are you with me? And see, in the meantime, when I hear the negative things from the enemy and I know they are lies. See, and, and, and when, when, I'm, when he's in his word, when he tells me, when, when Satan tells me that, 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 that this is all there is, I can go to the word of God and say, and, and, and look where he says, behold, I prepare a place, I go to a prepare a place for you. That where I am, you shall be also in my father's house. There are many mansions. The streets are paved with gold. The gates are, are made with pearl. We're going to put on a robe of righteousness. And we're going to put on the sandals. Uh, we're, going to, we're, we're going to be with our father in, in heaven. And the only way you're going to know that is to get in his word. 
So see, when I spend time alone, I focus on God's character. And then I'm never surprised to see the true goodness of the Lord. Yeah, see, when, when I'm going through, when people let me down, when I'm going through, when I've lost, when I'm going through with the issues of this world, I focus on God's word. And when I focus on God's word, hear me, family, I realize that there's so much more in store for me than what I'm dealing with right now. But now here's the good news, because see, there are some of you, 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 you're thinking, do I have to go through a life of hell to get to a life of peace, to an eternity of peace? No. While we do all, and while we do go through issues here, God has promised us, he's promised us that we can live in peace right here. We can live with joy right here. Will that be all the time? No. But I can tell you without a doubt that when you experience the joy of God on this side, you can be at peace. Amen. So family, I want you to know there's not only more on the other side. There's going to be more right here. Thank you for joining me tonight. I pray that something was said or done that encourage you to hold on just a little while and know this, that there is more with God than there is with this world. May we bow. Father, thank you again for another opportunity to come before you. I pray now in the name of Jesus that, uh, that we realize, Father, that yes, while we are struggling on this side, let us recognize that we're just pilgrims passing through on our way, on our way home. So, Father, touch those right now that just need some assurance. Touch those right now that need some strength. Touch those right now. I just need that of seeking the peace and, and the joy that only you can provide. And Father, I pray if there be one that don't know you in the pardon of their sin and they're struggling because they're dealing with so much on this side, let them know that they too can experience that same peace. The peace that will surpass all understanding all of this, these worldly attributes it will surpass it we thank you we love you and it's in Jesus name we do pray and we ask it all amen and thank God well family I thank you so much for joining us on tonight I pray again that you were blessed in some form or fashion I also want you to know uh, that uh, on this coming Saturday Begin at 8.30, we're going to have our Women of Hope prayer breakfast. Listen, whether you've signed up or not, I need for you need to see you in the house. The cost is only $20. But if by chance you do not have the $20, I want you to know, don't you worry about it. You come on. We're going to love on you. We're going to feed you with food, the of substance of life, and then we're going to feed you with a wonderful word and beautiful praise and worship on this coming Saturday. It's from 8.30 to 11.30. We'd love to have you out to come and, 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 and cry, come and shout, come and worship with other women just to have a beautiful time. And don't let children be an issue. If by chance you have some children, you need, uh, uh, you need someone to help take care of them. Babysitting will be provided. Just bring them on up. We're going to love on them too. Make sure that they eat as well. Amen. Amen. But I do need for you to, uh, to give us a call here at the church. You can call 28, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, 979-265-5358. Or you can give me a call 
at 281-961-1274. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, again, we expect God to move on this coming Saturday. And if by chance you don't make it, join us on Sunday, 9 o'clock for Sunday school, 10 o'clock for our Sunday morning worship. We will be here online as well as in person. Thank you again so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening and week. And don't ever forget, I love you. And there is nothing you could do about it. Be blessed.